I am deeply fulfilled by all that I do. Wouldn't you love to have this affirmation be true for you? Perhaps you've been limiting yourself by thinking some of these thoughts. I can't stand this job. I hate my boss. I don't earn enough money. They don't appreciate me at work. I can't get along with the people at work. I don't know what I want to do. This is negative defensive thinking. What kind of good position do you think this will get you? It is approaching the subject from the wrong end. If you are in a job you don't care for, if you want to change your position, if you're having problems at work, or if you're out of work, the best way to handle it is this. Begin by blessing your current position with love. Realize that this is only a stepping stone on your pathway. You are where you are because of your own thinking patterns. If they are not treating you the way you would like to be treated, then there is a pattern in your consciousness that is attracting such behavior. So, in your mind, look around your current job or the job you had last and begin to bless everything with love. The building, the elevators or stairs, the rooms, the furniture and equipment, the people you work for and the people you work with, and each and every customer. Begin to affirm for yourself that I always work for the most wonderful bosses, that my boss always treats me with respect and courtesy. My boss is generous and easy to work for. These beliefs will carry forward with you all your life, and if you become a boss, you will be like that too. A young man was about to start a new job and was nervous, and I remember saying, why wouldn't you do well? Of course you'll be successful. Open your heart and let your talents flow out of you. Bless the establishment, the people you work with and the people you work for, and each and every customer with love, and all will go well. He did just that and had a great success. If you want to leave your job, then begin to affirm that you release your current job with love to the next person who will be delighted to have it. Know that there are people out there looking for exactly what you have to offer and that you are being brought together on the checkerboard of life even now. A good affirmation for work. I am totally open and receptive to a wonderful new position, one that uses all my talents and abilities and allows me to express myself creatively in ways that are fulfilling to me. I work with and for people who I love and who love and respect me in a wonderful location and earning good money. If there is someone at work who bothers you, again, bless them with love every time you think of them. In each and every one of us is every single quality. While we may not choose to do so, we are all capable of being a Hitler or a Mother Teresa. If this person is critical, begin to affirm that he or she is loving and full of praise. If they are grouchy, affirm that they are cheerful and fun to be around. If they are cruel, affirm that they are gentle and compassionate. If you see only the good qualities in this person, then that is what they will show you, no matter how they behave towards others. Example. His new job was to play a piano in a club where the boss was known for being unkind and mean. The employees used to call the boss Mr. Death behind his back. I was asked how to handle this situation, and I replied, inside each and every person are all the good qualities. No matter how other people react to him, it has nothing to do with you. Every time you think of this boss, bless him with love. Keep affirming for yourself, I always work for wonderful bosses. He took my advice and did exactly that. My client began to receive warm greetings, and the boss soon began to slip him bonuses and hired him to play in several other clubs. The other employees, who were sending out negative thoughts to the boss, we're still being mistreated. If you like your job but feel you're not getting paid enough, 
Then begin to bless your current salary with love. Expressing gratitude for what we already have enables it to grow. Affirm that you are now opening your consciousness to a greater prosperity and that part of that prosperity is an increased salary. Affirm that you deserve a raise, not for negative reasons, but because you are a great asset to the company and they want to share their profits with you. Always do the best you can on the job, for then the universe will know that you are ready to be lifted out of where you are to the next and even better place. Your consciousness puts you where you are now. Your consciousness will either keep you there or lift you to a better position. It's up to you. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. My unique creative talents and abilities flow through me and are expressed in deeply satisfying ways. There are people out there who are always looking for my services. I am always in demand and can pick and choose what I want to do. I earn good money doing what satisfies me. My work is a joy and a pleasure. All is well in my world. Chapter 12, Success. Every experience is a success. What does failure mean anyway? Does it mean that something did not turn out the way you wanted it to or the way you were hoping? The law of experience is always perfect. We outpicture our inner thoughts and beliefs perfectly. You must have left out a step or had an inner belief that told you you did not deserve or that you felt unworthy. It's the same way as when I work with my computer. If there's a mistake, it's always me. It is something I have not done to comply with the laws of the computer. It only means that there is something else for me to learn. The old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, is so true. It doesn't mean beat yourself up and try the same old way again. It means recognize your error and try another way until you learn to do it correctly. I think it's our natural birthright to go from success to success all our life. If we are not doing that, either we are not in tune with our innate capabilities, or we do not believe it can be true for us, or we do not recognize our successes. When we set standards that are much too high for where we are at this moment, standards that we cannot possibly achieve right now, then we will always fail. When a little child is learning to walk or talk, we encourage it and praise it for every tiny improvement the child makes. The child beams and eagerly tries to do better. Is this the way you encourage yourself when you're learning something new? Or do you make it harder to learn because you tell yourself that you're stupid or clumsy or a failure? Only by practicing over and over do we learn the new and make it a natural part of us. When you watch an accomplished professional in any field, you are looking at innumerable hours of practice. Don't do what I used to do. I would refuse to try anything new because I didn't know how to do it and I didn't want to appear foolish. Learning is making mistakes until our subconscious mind can put together the right pictures. It doesn't matter how long you've been thinking of yourself as a failure. You can begin to create a success pattern now. We need to plant the seeds of success. These seeds will grow into an abundant harvest. Here are some success affirmations you can use. Divine intelligence gives me all the ideas I can use. Everything I touch is a success. There is plenty for everyone, including me. There are plenty of customers for my services. I establish a new awareness of success. 
I move into the winning circle. I am a magnet for divine prosperity. I am blessed beyond my fondest dreams. Riches of every sort are drawn to me. Golden opportunities are everywhere for me and I accept them. Pick one of the affirmations and repeat it for several days. Then pick another and do the same. Allow these ideas to fill your consciousness. Don't worry about how to accomplish this. The opportunities will come your way. Trust the intelligence within you to lead you and guide you. You deserve to be a success in every area of your life. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. I am one with the power that created me. I have within me all the ingredients for success. I now allow success to flow through me and manifest in my world. Whatever I am guided to do will be a success. I learn from every experience. I go from success to success and from glory to glory. My pathway is a series of stepping stones to ever greater successes. All is well in my world. Chapter 13, Prosperity. I deserve the best and I accept the best now. If you want this affirmation to be true for you, then you do not want to believe any of the following statements. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is filthy and dirty. I am poor but clean or good. I don't want to have money and be stuck up. I will never get a good job. I will never make any money. Money goes out faster than it comes in. I'm always in debt. Poor people can never get out from under. My parents were poor and I will be poor. Artists have to struggle. Only people who cheat have money. Everyone else comes first. Oh, I couldn't charge that much. I don't deserve. I'm not good enough to make money. Never tell anyone what I have in the bank. Don't lend money. A penny saved is a penny earned. Save for a rainy day. A depression could come at any moment. I resent others having money. Money only comes from hard work. How many of these beliefs belong to you? Do you really think that believing any of them will bring you prosperity? It is old, limited thinking. Perhaps it was what your family believed about money, because family beliefs stay with us unless we consciously release them. Wherever it came from, it must leave your consciousness if you want to prosper. To me, True prosperity begins with feeling good about yourself. It is also the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it. It is never an amount of money. It is a state of mind. Prosperity or lack of it is an outer expression of the ideas in your head. Deserving. If we do not accept the idea that we deserve to prosper, then even when abundance falls in our laps, we will refuse it somehow. Look at this example. A student in one of my classes was working to increase his prosperity. He came to class one night so excited, for he had just won $500. And he kept saying, I don't believe it. I never win anything. I don't believe it. We knew it was a reflection of his changing consciousness. He still felt he really didn't deserve it. And next week, he could not come to class as he had broken his leg, and the doctor bills came to $500. He had been frightened to move forward in a new prosperous direction and felt undeserving, so he punished himself in this way. Whatever we concentrate on increases, so don't concentrate on your bills. If you concentrate on lack and debt, then you will create more lack and debt. 
There is an inexhaustible supply in the universe. Be aware of it. Take time to count the stars on a clear evening, or the grains of sand in one handful, the leaves on one branch of a tree, the raindrops on a window pane, the seeds in one tomato. Each seed is capable of producing a whole vine with unlimited tomatoes on it. Be grateful for what you do have, and you will find it increases. I like to bless with love all that is in my life now, my home, the heat, water, light, telephone, furniture, plumbing, appliances, clothing, my transportation, jobs, the money I do have, friends, my ability to see and feel and taste and touch and walk and to enjoy this incredible planet. Belief in lack and limitation is the only thing that is limiting us. What belief is limiting you? Do you want to have money only to help others? Then you are saying that you are worthless. And be sure you're not rejecting prosperity now. If a friend invites you to lunch or dinner, accept with joy and pleasure. Don't feel that you're just trading with people. If you get a gift, Accept it graciously. If you can't use the gift, pass it on to someone else. Keep the flow of things moving through you. Just smile and say thank you. This way, let the universe know you are ready to receive your good. Make room for the new. Clean out your refrigerator. Get rid of all those little bits of stuff wrapped in foil. Clean out your closets. Get rid of all the stuff you've not used in the last six months or so. If you haven't used it in a year, definitely get it out of your home. Sell it, trade it, give it away, or burn it. Cluttered closets mean a cluttered mind. As you clean the closet, say to yourself, I'm cleaning out the closets of my mind. The universe loves symbolic gestures. The first time I heard the concept, the abundance of the universe is available to everyone, I thought it was ridiculous. Look at all the poor people, I said to myself. Look at my own seemingly hopeless poverty. To hear your poverty was only a belief in your consciousness made me angry. It took me many years to realize and accept that I was the only person responsible for my lack of prosperity. It was my belief that I was unworthy and not deserving, and that money is difficult to come by, and that I do not have talents and abilities that kept me stuck in a mental system of not having. Money is the easiest thing to demonstrate. How do you react to this statement? Do you believe it? Are you angry? Are you indifferent? Are you ready to throw this tape across the room? If you have any of these reactions, good. I've touched something deep inside of you, that very point of resistance to truth, and this is the area to work on. It is time to open yourself to the potential of receiving the flow of money and all good. Love your bills. It is essential that we stop worrying about money and stop resenting our bills. Many people treat bills as punishments to be avoided if possible. A bill is an acknowledgement of our ability to pay. The creditor assumes you are affluent enough and gives you the service or the product first. I bless with love each and every bill that comes into my home. I bless with love and stamp a small kiss on each and every check I write. If you pay with resentment, Money has a hard time coming back to you. If you pay with love and joy, you open the free-flowing channel of abundance. Treat your money as a friend, not as something you wad up and crush into your pocket. Your security is not your job or your bank account or your investments, nor your spouse or parents. Your security is your ability to connect with the cosmic power that creates all things. I like to think that the power within me that breathes my body 
is the same power that provides all that I need, and just as easily and simply. The universe is lavish and abundant, and it is our birthright to be supplied with everything we need, unless we choose to believe to the contrary. I bless my telephone with love each time I use it, and I affirm often that it brings me only prosperity and expressions of love. I do the same with my mailbox, and each day it is filled to overflowing with money and love letters of all kinds from friends and clients and far-off readers of my book. The bills that come in I rejoice over, thanking the companies for trusting me to pay. I bless my doorbell in the front door, knowing that only good comes into my home. I expect my life to be good and joyous, and it is. These ideas are for everyone. He was a hooker and wanted to increase his business, so he came to me for a prosperity session. He felt he was good at his profession and wanted to make $100,000 a year. I gave him the same ideas I'm giving you, and soon he had money to put into Chinese porcelains. He spent so much time at home, he wanted to enjoy the beauty of his ever-increasing investments. Rejoice in others' good fortune. Don't delay your own prosperity by being resentful or jealous that someone else has more than you. Don't criticize the way they choose to spend their money. It's none of your business. Each person is under the law of their own consciousness. Just take care of your own thoughts. Bless another's good fortune and know that there is plenty for all. Are you a stingy tipper? Do you stiff washroom attendants with some self-righteous statement? Do you ignore the porters in your office or apartment building at Christmas time? Do you pinch pennies when you don't need to? buying day-old vegetables or bread? Do you do your shopping in a thrift shop? Or do you always order the cheapest thing on the menu? There is a law of demand and supply. Demand comes first. Money has a way of coming to where it's needed. The poorest family can almost always get together the money for a funeral. Visualization the ocean of abundance. Your prosperity consciousness is not dependent on money. Your flow of money is dependent upon your prosperity consciousness. As you conceive of more, more will come into your life. I love the visualization of standing at the seashore, looking out at the vast ocean, and knowing that this ocean is the abundance that is available to me. Look down at your hands and see what sort of container you're holding. Is it a teaspoon, a thimble with a hole in it, a paper cup, a glass, a tumbler, a pitcher, a bucket, a wash tub? Or perhaps you have a pipeline connected to this ocean of abundance. Look around you and notice that no matter how many people are there, and no matter what kind of container they have, there is plenty for everyone. You cannot rob another, and they cannot rob you. And in no way can you drain the ocean dry. Your container is your consciousness, and it can always be exchanged for a larger container. Do this little exercise often to get the feeling of expansion and unlimited supply. Open your arms. I sit at least once a day with my arms stretched out to the side and say I am open and receptive to all the good and abundance in the universe. It gives me a feeling of expansion. The universe can only distribute to me what I have in my consciousness, and I can always create more in my consciousness. It's like a cosmic bank. I make mental deposits by increasing my awareness of my own abilities to create. Meditation, treatments, and affirmations are mental deposits. Let's make a habit of making daily deposits. 
Just having more money is not enough. We want to enjoy the money. Do you allow yourself to have pleasure with money? If not, why not? A portion of everything you take in can go to pure pleasure. Did you have any fun with your money last week? Why not? What old belief is stopping you? Let it go. Money does not have to be a serious subject in your life. Put it into perspective. Money is a means of exchange, and that's all it is. What would you do and what would you have if you didn't need money? Jerry Gillis, who has written Money Love, one of the best books I know on money, suggests that we create a poverty penalty for ourselves. Every time we think or say a negative about our money situation, we fine ourselves a certain amount and put it in a container. At the end of the week, we have to spend this money on pleasure. We need to shake up our money concepts. I have found it easier to teach a seminar on sexuality than one on money. People get very angry when their money beliefs are being challenged. Even people who come to a seminar wanting desperately to create more money in their lives will go crazy when I try to change their limiting beliefs. I am willing to change. I am willing to release old negative beliefs. Sometimes we have to work with these two affirmations a lot in order to open the space to begin creating prosperity. Let's release the fixed income mentality. Do not limit the universe by insisting that you have only a certain salary or income. That salary or income is a channel. It is not your source. Your supply comes from one source, the very universe itself. There are an infinite number of channels. We must open ourselves to them. We must accept in consciousness that supply can come from anywhere and everywhere. Then when we walk down the street and find a penny or a dime, we say thank you to the source. It may be small, but new channels are beginning to open. I am open and receptive to new avenues of income. I now receive my good from expected and unexpected sources. Recognize prosperity. Begin to recognize prosperity everywhere and rejoice in it. Reverend Ike, the well-known evangelist in New York City, remembers as a poor preacher, he used to walk by good restaurants and homes and automobiles and clothing establishments and say out loud, that's for me. That's for me. Allow fancy homes and banks and fine stores and showrooms of all sorts and yachts to give you pleasure. Recognize that all this is part of your abundance and you are increasing your consciousness to partake of these things if you desire. If you see a well-dressed person, think, isn't it wonderful that they have so much abundance? There is plenty for all of us. We don't want to have someone else's good. We want to have our own good. And yet, we do not own anything. We only use possessions for a period of time until they pass on to someone else. Sometimes a possession may stay in a family for a few generations, but eventually it will pass on. There is a natural rhythm and flow of life. Things come and things go. And I believe that when something goes, it is only to make room for something new and better. Accept compliments. So many people want to be rich, and yet they won't accept a compliment. I have many a budding actor and actress who want to be a star, and yet they cringe at a compliment. Compliments are gifts of prosperity. Learn to accept them graciously. My mother taught me early to smile and say thank you, when I received a compliment or a gift, and it's been an asset all my life. It's even better to accept the compliment and return it so that the giver feels as though they have received a gift. It is a way of keeping the flow of good going. Rejoice in the abundance of being able to awaken each morning and experience a new day. Be glad to be alive, to be healthy, to have friends, 
to be creative, to be a living example of the joy of living. Live to your highest awareness. Enjoy your transformational process. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. I am one with the power that created me. All my needs and desires are met before I even ask. I am divinely guided and protected, and I make choices that are beneficial for me. I rejoice in others' successes, knowing there is plenty for us all. I am constantly increasing my conscious awareness of abundance, and this reflects in a constantly increasing income. My good comes from everywhere and everyone. All is well in my world.